Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in the previous lecture, we saw quite a few uh, important statistics that one can calculate from IID samples. And uh, we are of course interested in the underlying distribution and what we can say about it. But uh, you know, we should start uh, with some basic statistics first, basic descriptive statistics like you know the sample mean, sample variance, sample proportion. Uh, they all seem to mean something very nice. We saw some nice results. Uh, that encapsulate what they mean, etc. in some sense. So, what I am going to try and illustrate for you uh, in this lecture is uh, to look at some real life data. Okay? So, now uh, uh, when, when you look at real life data, quite often the distribution is not immediately apparent and uh, you have to rely on these kind of statistics, the sample statistics that you have uh, to try and infer something from it. And maybe with enough experience and enough uh, practice and enough uh, you know, knowledge of what the data is about, you may be able to guess at a distribution or, or quite often you may not even need the distribution or something like that. So, so all you have is data and all you have is very limited knowledge. You will see uh, it is a different world, apparently when you see data, uh, when you do not have the distribution you will be really lost. So, so let me show you some uh, simple illustrations uh, with actual data and then hopefully see how these things work out when you see something in real life. Okay, so, let us let us get started. Okay, so, let us begin with the iris data. You remember the iris data, there are three different classes of iris. This is sepals and petals and uh, you know the length and the width etc. Uh, it is very popular data set like I mentioned in statistics. There are three classes 0, 1 and 2. In each, inst each class there are 50 instances of data. So, think of it as in each class there are 50 irises and you have measured the sepal length, sepal width. Uh, petal length, petal width for each of these 50 irises and this data is available to you. Okay. Okay. So, now let us focus on the sepal length of class 0 irises. Okay. So, uh, so, so, there is data available to you and the data I have listed here and you can actually pull it up in your uh, collab notebook or something and actually look at the data. That is something that you can do. Uh, that is fine and the data would look like that 5.1, 4.9, 4.7 so on. So, I am going to think of a model through which this data could have originated. Right? So, remember what is my model? My model is usually an IID sample model, IID samples from a particular distribution. Uh, so, when you see actual data, you have to sort of imagine in your mind that maybe there is some distribution which you sample IID. Uh, you may get some uh, numbers of this form. In fact, what should that distribution be? You know, that is a very deep difficult questions to answer. In most cases, we may not be able to answer such questions, but at least you can imagine that that is the model. Okay? Some unknown distribution, uh, this data has come out. Okay? Now, you can calculate the mean of this data. Now, now remember, the, the crucial thing is, I, I will keep using the word IID samples, but remember in the previous lecture, I spoke to you about the model for IID samples and the actual instance of the data, right? It's every sampling as I called it. So, this data is one particular sampling from my model. My model is IID repetitions of some distribution, okay? It's 5.1 is one instance or one observation of that distribution, a value from that distribution. That's all. This, this is not actually anything, not directly the distribution. I do not know the distribution, right? So, I have to hope for what I can do best, right? So, I may calculate the sample mean. I will have to add up these uh, 50 numbers and divide by 50, right? That is the sample mean. And how do I do sample variance? Uh, I do, you know, for every number, that number minus the sample mean squared. You add that up 50 times and then divide by 49, right? So, that is some small little adjustment we do for the sample variance. I would get, you know, 0 0.1242, which is 0 0.3524 squared. So, that is like the sample standard deviation, the square root of the sample variance, okay? I can also do some proportions based on this data, okay? So, S of, uh, you know, the sepal length of class 0, this is being greater than 5. I can count every single length which is greater than 5 divided by 50, I would get a proportion. A sample proportion is 22 by 50. Likewise, I might do a sample proportion of sepal length being 4.8 to 5.2, I will get 20 by 50. So, these are things uh, that I love. I, 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 I did this on a Python notebook sheet, I quickly wrote some commands, commands and got it out. It is difficult to do it by hand, there are 50 numbers and you have to just go count, count, count. You can do it. Uh, but it is a bit laborious. Uh, one, today, one can pull this data into a Python notebook and do it 
uh, very quickly, right? So, it is possible to compute these things. But nevertheless, this is all you can do, right? So, you do not know the underlying distribution, nobody has given that distribution to you. Uh, you may even ask very foundational philosophical questions on does nature have a distribution and then produce the iris or you know let us not go there. <laughs> so, it is just a, uh, just a statistical uh, tool that we are using to understand these numbers that come out. Okay? So, this is the simple length. The same thing I can do for petal width and I am not going to go through the detail here. Again, once I say class 3, I can imagine that there is one unknown distribution from which uh, these petal widths are being sampled and then one can uh, you know compute the various uh, statistics that we did. So, these, these are just numbers that come out just, just to give you a sense of how these actual numbers are. Okay? Now, you can ask uh, very intriguing questions. So, how good is the IID samples model? Okay? So, once you fix a particular class, it is uh, it's not too bad, you know, I mean, I think if, if you look at the values and if you look at how they are distributed and all that, it seems like a reasonable thing to do, right. So, it is like, you know, you, you go and find an iris somewhere and then you go and you know, supposing it is class 0, let us say, and then you measure the sepal width, uh, sepal length or you go to class 3 iris, measure the petal width, it is it's going to be something of this sort and it's, it's it seems okay that, that every iris should have a uh, should be independent of the other iris and so, so if you keep measuring you should get independence and I do not know I, I would I would not mind this model I think this model is perfectly fine it is it seems uh, very reasonable in this case ok. So, that is the iris data for you like I said you know we, we are looking at uh, actual data and uh, we are imagining that it comes from an IID sampling sort of model and then uh, we are proceeding computing sample mean, sample variance and proportion and all that, okay. That is uh, the first thing. So, the next uh, the next example I am going to give you, uh, I am often accused in the office of my slides being very dull and dreary, no color, no art, etc. So, I thought I should put something here. So, so here is uh, some data on the Taj Mahal and I get an opportunity to put the picture of the Taj Mahal on the slide. Okay. So, this is data of uh, air quality around Taj Mahal. There is a monitor there and you can go to the Pollution Control Board of India's website. Uh, every day they put out a PDF file from which you are supposed to pull out these numbers and populate a table which is what I have done. This is actually April of 2021, uh, 1st April to 12th April. Uh, there are about 11 numbers I think in this. Yeah, some dates in the middle are missing. So, I think 11 numbers of observations. There are four different uh, uh, entities that are now you know counted I mean weighed and in the air and their numbers are given below. Uh, one is uh, SO2, NO2, two gases which are important to monitor pollution. Uh, the next two are just particulate matter, any matter at all. Uh, 2.5 and 10 just indicate their size. 2.5 is I think relatively small and 10 is slightly larger. Uh, so some units micrograms per cubic meter. So, if you take cubic meter of air, how many micrograms of particulate matter PM10 of 10 is some size uh, are there or not. Okay? The max which is the last row uh, is basically the maximum allowable number within a, a 24 hour average period. So, 80, 80, 60, 100 these are considered good numbers. Oh, I do not know if they are internationally good or not, but at least in India the pollution control board these are the standards. Okay? So, this is the standard. Uh, if you below which it is good, above which it is bad. Okay? So, this is the Taj Mahal we are talking about. This is uh, uh, definitely symbolizes uh, one thing about India which is uh, good to preserve. Okay? And you can see the numbers are a bit uh, disappointing for PM10. It is uh, it's all way higher than the maximum allowable limit and uh, PM2.5 also quite often seems to be crossing the limit and on the SO2, NO2 front we are uh, doing okay. All right, so here's data, just some data that somebody gave you, and uh, not too much of it. It's small enough that one can try and do calculations by hand, or even by a small uh, computer program, or just some something available with you. You can do a calculation with a calculator also. So what can we say about this uh, this data, right? So this data is out here, and what can you say? Okay, you can do statistics, the descriptive statistics from this data for each of these things. You can find the sample means and uh, this is just a calculation. You can find sample standard deviations or variances. I put uh, the square, this is actually variance. Okay. Uh, so, let me just correct that. This is uh, 
this is a variance. Okay, variance and standard deviation. Uh, so, and uh, I may be interested in this proportion. The proportion is something of interest to me. Uh, the, pro uh, the proportion that the max was exceeded in the data, right? I am finding that for SO2 and NO2, it was 0, it is never exceeded. Uh, 2.5 was exceeded uh, 7 out of 11 times and uh, PM10 was exceeded uh, 11 out of 11 times, okay? So, this is the situation and uh, it is okay. I mean, the phenomenon of how PM10 matter gets generated at the Taj Mahal or how PM 2.5 matter gets generated at the Taj Mahal might be complicated to model. Statistics might come and help you. You may want to say some statistical statements about it. It feels okay. But then, uh, do you really like IID samples model for this data? The data that came out that I showed you in the previous table, day after day, uh, the pollution levels is IID samples model good? Do you think uh, IID is the way to go or do you think what happened one day will influence what happened the next day. Mm, one can think about it. It's uh, so, so 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 you need more slightly more knowledge about how this particulate matter gets generated. You should know a little bit about Agra surrounding areas. Where's the Taj Mahal? Where is this environment monitoring station? What does it get influenced by? What happens if there are fires in Haryana? Um, you know fields and fires in Punjab and all that. Does it change significantly? I mean, there is so much more to this uh, simple question of do you like IID samples uh, for this data? Uh, maybe you can start a discussion in the discourse stop, uh, discourse, uh, uh, you know, forum and we can debate this. This is an interesting thing to debate. Uh, so, it's, it's, it's beyond uh, what a statistician should do at some level, right? So, I mean, maybe, maybe, I don't know if it's beyond or not. It's not really a simple mathematical calculation. You cannot do a calculation and say, hey, Therefore, IID samples is good. I mean, you, it's not possible. It, it's more of an art, and more of uh, more of a you know, knowledge base, your intuition, and there's so much other reasoning that needs to come into this uh, than just uh, simple statistical questions. So these kind of questions we may or may or may not be able to answer mostly. Okay, keep that in mind. But uh, it's okay. It's not too bad as a first order approximation. If you don't know anything, it's good to assume IID samples. It's not bad. Okay, so. Look at the second point. Really, that's the question do we, we have to worry about, right? Is the Taj in trouble? So really, I mean, from the statistical analysis, I want to be able to definitively say something about that, okay? Is it dangerous? Is it, uh, is it, is it going to, uh, you know, damage uh, Taj Mahal? Is, is the pollution going to be high like this forever? Uh, is it, uh, you know, is it going to change over the time? I've given you data only in April. Uh, so, one probably needs a lot more data. I try to look at the data. I could not find the data conveniently organized. It is just PDF files and extracting numbers from PDF files. It is very difficult. So, I have not put all the data out there for you. Uh, maybe that is an interesting exercise for you, right? So, look at the data uh, from the Taj uh, pollution numbers and uh, look at it over a year and see if there is anything there uh, that is worrisome. If it is really, really going very high, uh, is there something that uh, one needs to worry about? Uh, in that and, and but but really you know to be able to create a statistical story analysis story from this and argue convincingly that yes the Taj is in trouble we need to do something desperate otherwise it will just you know the beauty of it will disappear in some time so it needs a lot more work than just you know doing a few sample mean and standard deviation calculations right so it's a little bit different uh, from that that's not a one one the next question, the third question I've asked here is, uh, can we really conclude anything with 11 data points? 11 sounds really small. And uh, is there a sense we have of, of how many data points we need before we can say anything strong about uh, these kind of questions, okay? So these kind of discussions and questions are at the heart of, uh, you know, concluding something from statistics or building a statistical story about a phenomenon. Now this, uh, uh, the telling of a story involving data is very, very important. You will see so many articles and reports today about uh, how people sell something with some data and all that. Uh, so whatever you learn or not learn from this course, you should learn how to read a statistical story very carefully. I mean, read about number of data points, read about sample assumptions, 
read about how reasonable the model is and from there conclude for yourself how strong is the confidence in that story uh, in, the, in its conclusions. Okay? So these are questions. We are not yet ready to answer these questions in this course. I just brought it up because it is an important question. In every statistical story, these questions come up and uh, one needs to be able to, uh, you know, sort of know how to read these things. Okay. Okay. So, let us come to one more piece of data. This we have looked at quite often uh, in this course and let me get into it once again. Okay. So, I am going to look at the IPL and then in particular I am going to look at runs code in the deliveries 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So, you know what 0 0.1 is, right? 0 to over, first over, first delivery. First over second delivery, first over third delivery. That is 0 0.1.2.3. So, I have data from 1598 innings of past IPL matches. Uh, there is a shared spreadsheet in which this data is there. Uh, it turns out crickshe.org now puts out the data in CSV format also. And you remember one of my earlier lectures I was talking about converting from YAML to CSV, etc. Now, crickshe does that automatically for you. You can go look up the CSV data itself. Okay. So, all the calculations were done using the spreadsheet. So, 1598 is a lot of data, right? So, you cannot be writing it down in pen and paper. You need a good spreadsheet program or any other program into which you pull this data and do the calculations by computer. That is important. Okay, what are sample means? Here are sample means. For point 0.1, the sample mean is 0.73, then 0.87, and then 0 0.95, 0 0.3. What are the sample variances? 1.5, 1.82. Okay, so that is 2.1 or something. So that is the variances between 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And a few proportions that may be of interest, uh, proportion of dot balls uh, in point 0.1 is 0.5989. So, basically about 60 percent of uh, the first delivery were dot balls, uh, about 55 percent of the second delivery were dot balls, 53 percent of the third delivery were dot balls. The next proportion I am interested in is a 4 or a 6, okay, a boundary hit, I mean outside the boundary, either rolling straight or over the ropes, 4 or a 6. Uh, in point 0.1, about 10 percent of the deliveries were boundaries, 11.45 uh, in point 0.2 and 13 percent in point 0.3. So, notice the story that is coming out, there is lots of data, 1598 and what is the story here? What is the trend here? Is there a trend? Is it clearly justified? Does it seem solid enough? Yeah, yes, right? I would say yes, there is a clear trend from the sample statistics. Look at the trend that you can read from this, right? And the story, I think the story is much more convincing than the Taj Mahal story, isn't it? Any story I build with Taj Mahal with 11 pieces of data, not that convincing. On the other hand, any data, any story I build, a simple story that I am building, the story that is uh, very clear is the runs code is going to clearly increase from point 0.1 to point 0.3. The runs code in point 0.3 are clearly higher than the runs code in point 0.1 with good, good confidence, we can say that, right? So, the number of runs code is going to be higher in point 0.3 and that also makes intuitive sense. In the first delivery, uh, most batsmen would defend and by the third delivery, it is very likely that they get a loose ball and they hit it, right? So, that is the, that is, it is a nice uh, simple story backed up by intuition, backed up by data in very uh, solidly, uh, in solid manner. But still, look at that question. Do, do, you, do you like the IID samples model? Do you think every delivery that is bowled by one particular bowler in the first over of an IPL innings is independent and identically distributed? Is it a good enough model? Maybe, you know, one needs some additional checks to check this. Maybe later on we will see if, if we can do this. It's, it's, but it is not a bad model. It, it looks okay, you know, I mean, first three deliveries that you bowl. I think, uh, I think it's, it's okay. It is not too bad. If you if you get hit for a four or a six in the first ball, maybe it becomes a bit uh, different. But in most cases, I would say first over, even if you get hit for a four for the first ball, most bowlers are going to bowl in the same plan, the plan that they would have had before they came into the match, right? So it seems reasonable. Okay. So here is uh, three different stories that we tried to build. One from the iris. There was not much of a story to tell there. It was just data. I didn't emphasize the story angle too much. And then we got the Taj Mahal data and then we wanted to say some story about is the Taj Mahal in danger, but we felt like, okay, it looks bad, but 
I don't know if I can strongly say based on 11 points of data, it seems a bit unreliable. Uh, we don't have any solid way of saying that, yet, but at least even then it feels 11 seems really small, the two only in April looks really, really small and uh, really unlikely to capture the whole uh, thing. On the other hand, IPL, if you want to tell a story about how the third ball goes for higher runs than the first ball, okay, this may or may not be a great story, but anyway, it's, it's, it is a story and if you want to say that, uh, it, it feels much more solid, you are on much more solid ground uh, when you say that. Okay? So, hopefully this, this gave you uh, a good feel for how uh, these, uh, you know, whether, whether or not you are confident about a statistical story you are building uh, depends on so many other things and the sample means and sample variance and sample proportions do seem to convey something uh, which is interesting. Okay? So, what we are going to see in the next lecture is uh, some justifications for why this number of samples is important, why as the number of samples increases, when you have IID samples, you can be much more confident about your story. Okay? So, for that, it turns out one needs to look at sums of random variables. Okay? So, if you remember, the sample mean came from the sum of the IID samples, right? Okay, of course, divided by n, but the n is just a number, it is not random. So, the sum of the random variable matters. Even sample proportions, if you think about it, it is actually a Bernoulli sample, isn't it? 1 and 0 and you are actually adding up uh, a bunch of random variables. So, what happens when you add a bunch of random variables? We have seen this once before. I will quickly remind you of what happens and then present you a result uh, about sums of random variables which is very, very, very famous and popular. Okay? So, that will come in the next lecture. Uh, thank you very much.